Hey everyone, I'm Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat S Q R R L on Instagram. This is going to be a bonus episode, so thanks to the folks who contribute to the podcast via Patreon, PayPal, or Ko-Fi, I'm able to do a bonus episode, hopefully once a month. Um, and this episode is going to be all about a recently completed sweater that I did. So if you're looking for a regular episode that's chatty and, you know, this isn't that. Um, I am specifically going to be talking about my recently finished granny stripe cardigan. So if you don't recall, I'll put a picture of it in here. Um, so yeah, like I feel like if I button it, I'm just going to butt. I usually only button the bust buttons on a sweater. Um, I typically don't button these, but it does button fine just all the way. Um, but it's also one of the reasons I do like a lot of buttons is because that way they're not, they're less likely to gape at the bust. So here it is from the side in all of its crazy stripy glory. And then here is the back. So in this episode, I'll talk a little bit about like why I decided to do this project, why I chose the yarn I did, um, some things I changed about the original pattern and things like that. Um, so just to get started, I'll talk a little bit about why I chose this project and how that happened. So friends and I were doing a crochet granny, or are doing a crochet granny square squap, 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 squap. And through doing that, it really was, um, it really piqued my interest in doing crochet again. Um, it just felt very homey and, you know, I think when I first started knitting, I was really trying to get away from the homemade look. Like there's this whole discussion about like handmade versus homemade, which I feel like is sort of, you know, it has inherent snobbery in it, which I totally participate in at times. And again, when I started knitting, that was one of the reasons I liked knitting is because it definitely had the handmade versus homemade um, aesthetic about it. There's lots of other reasons I do prefer ultimately knitting, um, but that's not what this video is about. Um, so I think, you know, for a long time, I really was like pushed, a, pushed away from um, crochet. A, it's just not what's in my field of view regularly, um, but also felt limited by what I could do. Like I n always hated trying to do that chain row to start with. Um, and like, I just didn't know a lot about how to do shaping and things like that. And so I had really, just not even kind of like dabbled in it. Even when I would see like a cute um, animal, like a stuffy or something that was crocheted, I would just like, no, I can't do that. Um, or I'm just, you know, I don't want to try to do that. Um, because I always end up with like the triangular shape when I try to work something flat in crochet, I always end up with like a triangular shaped thing or what have you. But we started doing this granny square swap and it was really pleasant and very satisfying um, to do like it had a great potential for stash busting um, and it was just like I like the squares because it's like oh I'm there's like this finite it's done it's really portable because you don't have to worry about stitches falling or dropping or whatever um, so that kind of got me interested in it and then I saw some little like some fingering weight granny squares and I was really interested in those they're super cute and so I kind of did not want to do a granny square cardigan because I didn't want to do all of that seaming. Um, but the thought of doing a granny stripe cardigan was really intriguing to me. So I was on Ravelry. I was looking for options in the crochet sweater. I found a sweater that's called um, A Good Vintage Cardigan by Fran Morgan, which is available online. It was originally published in a crocheting magazine. I did purchase that pattern, but I don't necessarily recommend that pattern. It has really limited sizing. Um, and it's not a particularly great pattern. Uh, again, I'm not a crocheter, so I'm not as versed in what makes a good crochet pattern versus not, but it's not particularly useful. For example, um, as a person who doesn't crochet, I had never really heard about the foundation row of way of starting crochet. And it's generally accepted to be like the most um, common start cast on in knitter speak for crochet garments and yet that wasn't mentioned it was just a traditional chain cast on um so neither here nor there i'm not like vehemently against that pattern but 
I would not necessarily recommend that pattern either, especially due to the limited sizing. One thing to be aware of too, um, if you do go with the, um, the pattern that I did is I didn't even realize that there were British crochet terms and uh, American crochet terms. So just be aware that there is a difference. <laughs> Heads up. However, um, that is the pattern that I started with. That's what I purchased. And the reason I really got interested is because on Ravelry, um, there is a project listed called Beatrix Potter Granny Cardigan. And, oh my goodness, it is by Miss Michelle Bell, who also has a podcast or had a podcast. I'm not sure which. I'm going to show you a picture of it. It is on the Ravelry page, but it's mostly just the picture of her cardigan. But if Ravelry gives you visual issues, just skip ahead for a second. Um, but anyway, it's super cute. And she got me because the stripe colors she used, um, while not normally what I would pick uh, for my colors, were all inspired by Beatrix Potter characters. So, I mean, I might need to make this exact cardigan in the near future. I won't lie. I put all of these yarns in my cart on Knit Picks, and I almost bought them all. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but anyway, so again, I love this. Not at all my normal colors, but I was really drawn to it. Um... So that's the reason I ultimately fell down this rabbit hole of this grown, this crochet granny stripe cardigan. Now, so that was the like, why did I choose this project? And then what did I choose? How did I choose my yarns? So really it was just about working with what I had. So as I said, I put all of those card, those yarns for the Knit Picks um, Beatrix Potter version into my cart because I was really on board, but I wanted to try to work with what I had. <laughs> so I'm very fortunate, as you can see, to have a good stash to work with. And I had this hand spun that I had purchased, that I had made, um, and I spun it from Hello Yarn. I purchased, I think a pound, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even 20 ounces, but now I can't remember, um, of this purpley, taupey, little bit of brown, you know, and, and I had spun that a, a while ago. I just spun it um, the way I generally spill, which is kind of like a modified long draw. Excuse me, I should not record in the afternoon, but with a little person who is, I say little person, she's taller than me, with a young person in the house who's doing online school, our schedules are a little bit wackadoodles. Um, but anyway, so I spun that just a two-ply, um, and I, I spun it a large enough quantity to hopefully do a sweater, but I knew that if I was crocheting, crocheting takes so much yarn. It's ridiculous. And in fact, my cardigan ended up weighing 34 ounces, um, and it's a fingering, well, my crochet, my um, hand spun is probably more like a sport, a fat sport. <laughs> Some might call that a DK. I don't know. It's all relative. Um, so, so a 34 ounce fingering sport-ish um, sweater, that's a, and I, I mean, granted, I'm a big person, so my sweaters are automatically gonna weigh more, but that's more than any other fingering weight sweater by far, um, or even sport weight sweater that I have. Maybe, it's, it's like bordering on worst weight. <laughs> So, I mean, if you're trying to use up yarn, crochet is a great way to use up yarn. <laughs> but I chose the yarns because I had that hand spun and I knew that I wanted to work that into a garment of some sort. And then I had purchased at um, a local knitting festival called the Fiber Event. Steve and Andy of Leading Men Fiber Arts were there. And it was the first time they had their non-super wash fingering weight yarn. And so they had this beautiful colors. They had um, kind of like this bone color, or parchment color, white, a good light purple, a good dark purple, 
and then they had a gold as well. And originally I had thought I'll purchase two skeins of the light purple and then a skein of the, each of the other colors. And I originally thought that I would do some sort of like feather and fan, like a gar like a short sleeve sweater with like maybe a feather and fan on the border, what have you, because I just really loved all those colors together. And I thought maybe I could get a garment out of those, what was it, five skeins? Yeah. So I had purchased them with the thought of doing something like that, but not specifically like, oh, I am going to do X, Y, Z. So they, they hung out in stash. And in fact, the gold is still there because I didn't use it. But they looked beautiful with this hand spun. And so that's the reason I decided to use them all together. Now, I knew that I would need another skein of the fingering weight. So luckily in stash, I also had this beautiful buoy fingering weight from um, hip strings and this is their own proprietary blend of yarn it's like manx and whatever it's a great yarn and i really like it and it's dyed mill dyed so it has like the great feather feathering heathering <laughs> um and it just worked really well as a medium like between that light of the leading men and the dark purple of the leading men, if just slotted in there nicely and because I had two skeins of that that I had originally purchased for a shawl and two skeins of the light purple that's the reason I decided to do the stripe sequence that I ultimately did and that stripe sequence was basically that I would go light hand spun let me light let me let me dial this back I would go, we're going to just call this white for the sakes of simplicity. White hand spun, light hand spun, medium hand spun, dark hand spun. But then I would mirror back out to the light again. So once I get to the dark, I'd go back to the medium, back to the light purple, back to the white, back to the light purple. So I mirrored the, the, um, the sequence because I had two skeins of both the light purple and the buoy. So I thought that would be a great way to make sure that I didn't run out of anything. And then I could, um, and also because there were more of the medium tones, in fact, they are the two medium tones. It just made sense to do it that way, um, to minimize the contrast because while I wanted it to look striped, I didn't want it to look I didn't necessarily want it to look like stark contrast. Um, so yeah, so that's why I decided to do that. And then again, the reason I did the hand spun every other row was because I had that amount of hand spun to work with. Okay, so that's why I decided on the yarns that I did. Okay, so then let's get into my actual beginning of the project. So when I start the start head the project, I originally thought I would do the um, the cast on or the I'm gonna say cast on because I'm just in that knitting that's where my wheelhouse is so I thought I would do the cast on with the buoy so the like medium purple and in fact I did I did a traditional chained cast on for my size I needed something like 300 and something stitches um, and so I did that I did that foundation row of crocheting into all those little chain stitches and I don't like to do that. It's one of the reasons I don't do crochet um, is because I hate doing that first row. And I know that there's something called a foundation row where you can work essentially that chain with the first row of single crochets at one time. Um, and I did try to do that, but like, I don't know if my yarn was just too dark or if I was just trying to do it. Neither way, it did not work for me. It was just as tedious as the other thing. And so I decided against that. Um, but anyway, so I did the chain, I, did, I got it all set up. I did a few, I did the, the band basically in that medium purple and then transitioned and started my sweater. And when I got about, I'm gonna say about this much-ish, I realized I really did not like that medium purple um, as the cast on. And in fact, I wanted to have hand spun as that cast on. So then it kind of just sat in my knitting bag for a while because I just, the thought of doing that beginning row again was just too overwhelming. <laughs> did not sound like something I wanted to do. So I kind of just let it marinate a little bit to make sure like, okay, is it really that important to me to change this? 
And ultimately I decided it was, but the thought of doing that chain row again was just not cool. So again, I tried to do the foundation row again, still had no luck with it. Decided that I wanted to play around with trying to do a knitting cast on and then transition from the knitting cast on into crochet. So I'll put a link in the show notes that tells you, uh, that'll take you to that cast on if you're ever interested in trying it out. Um, basically, I just did a knitting cast on. I did a twisted German just because that's the knitting cast on that I like the best. I did a twisted German cast on and onto a like circular knitting needle and then just crocheted it off. Um, it worked out really well. I know that I did not invent this technique. Other people have done it before, but I couldn't find a video on it. So I, had, I went ahead and did a tutorial on it. Um, and I really like how it turned out. Um, a, it was so much easier for me. Um, again, whether for whatever reason, it was just so much easier for me. And then I liked the, the texture of how it worked. You know, it was flexible, but not like overly stretchy because you know, crochet is a little bit more rigid than knitting. So it really seemed to match up with what I was doing. Um, and I'm very pleased with it. And again, it just made it for me so much less intense. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you're wanting close up pictures and more information, again, that tutorial, I'm not concise in my tutorials at all. So you may need to skip ahead for things, but um, I really do like how it turned out. And again, especially in the fingering way, like nobody, it's, nobody's gonna be like, you didn't use a traditional cast on. Well, cause I mean, that would be weird anyway, but <laughs> you can't tell from any sort of distance. Um, so yeah, so I did the, I did, went ahead and just, I did not do as much as a foundation as they did in the pattern, but like, I just didn't, I was happy with what it looked like. So I just went on. Um, and so then, yeah, I just basically did my treble crochet clusters until, um, I did do a few decreases. Uh, if if you've never watched my podcast or you've never heard me talk about garments, um, my hips are significantly large, whatever. My measurements are like 61. I don't even know what my waist is. Is it like 52? I don't even know. And then my bust is like 56. So like, I like my sweaters to go in a little bit at the waist. Otherwise I feel like they, I just feel like, I just like the way they look better that way. So, um, I did do some decreases um, just like I would with knitting or placed where I would with knitting. Um, and if you're ever curious, I have a whole YouTube video about how I modify garments for myself in knitting. Um, but essentially I did the same thing here. I just decreased a bit. I'm trying to find one. I'm sure I'll never be able to find one to show you. <laughs> Which is good, right? Because I was like, I don't really know how to decrease a crochet. I'm just going to go with this. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, yeah, you can see. Um, you can see what I did is this light purple is where I did my decreasing. So, basically, what I did is do two, like, the, instead of doing three crochets, three triple crochets into one, I did two cro crochets and then, a, and then a crochet into the next space and then on the next row I just treated them as one so you can see it but not again not on the vastness that is the plane of my body <laughs> and I just took I didn't take out a lot because I didn't want it to be like a real hourglass shape and again knitting is uh, more flexible so I wasn't sure exactly um, how crochet would behave in a garment. Um, so I, I did think that I needed a, um, a fit that either had, you know, zero to positive ease. Like lots of times in knitting, I do negative ease. Um, on a cardigan, sometimes it's a little bit better to do zero ease for me, for what I like. Um, but I definitely did not want to try to do negative ease with crochet because it's just not as, as flexible as knitting is. So 
that's it. And that's all, and I guess that I should also speak to that. Like, how did I plan? Because ultimately I started with a pattern and then quickly abandoned it because I had to modify so much to fit my body anyway. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't recall it talking about how much ease you should include or anything like that. Um, so yeah, basically I just went off plan immediately. Um, you know, I got that foundation row. I mean, what's really a nice thing about crochet is that I feel like the gauge swatch doesn't lie. At least it hasn't so far in my one garment. Uh, because again, it's not flexible. There's not as many factors to take into a, into account. So, you know, I did my, my crochet swatch, measured it, gave myself, you know, an inch or two of ease, and then just started to go from there. You know, so if my hips are 61, um, usually your hip you want to have less ease, maybe negative ease, uh, just so it doesn't bell out. So... And also that's like the fullest part of my hip and I actually wanted it to be just a little bit shorter than that. So, you know, maybe I started with a little bit of negative ease. But <laughs> then I went to positive ease, just a little bit though. Um, so yeah, I just did that. And then I did some increases in the front for the bust. And again, not as much as I would in a knitting. I wanted a slightly boxier fit. I thought that was more realistic, but I did some increases in the front. Increases in crochet seemed to be easier to me anyway. Um, and one, instead of in one treble crochet space, instead of just working a treble crochet, I just worked two treble crochets in that space. And I usually do put a marker in there. So I remember um, when I get there, like, oh, okay, don't, you know, I remember like, okay, this is supposed to be two chunks, not just one giant chunk. Um, so I do usually put markers in there just to help me remember. So yeah, I just did that. When I got to the armhole, um, now see, I don't even know how hers was written because I didn't do it. But what I did, <laughs> what I did was basically just like a modified drop shoulder. I did not want to do like, usually I'm a sleeve cap kind of gal or a raglan kind of gal. Um, so usually that's, I mean, I know how to do that knitting, but I just wasn't sure how to do it in crochet. Um, you know, cause knitting, usually if I have a sleeve cap, I work it in the round from the top down and like I can make that work. There's like a formula that you can follow to make it work. And I had no idea how to do that in crochet for a bottom up sweater. Um, so I thought the simplest approach would be just to do a modified drop shoulder. So meaning I cast off for my underarm and then just a little, like two rows, I did some decreases. So that my, if like say this is the back of my sweater, like this is, if this is the arm, like where I'm getting to the armhole, you have a cast off for your underarm and then just a little bit until you go up into the sweater. Um, so that's what I did. Originally, again, since I went off pattern, I cast off too much for the back. I got cast, cast off too much for the underarm. And I realized that I, I had no idea, like in knitting, I know how to work with back stitches fewer than front stitches. Like I do that all the time, but it occurred to me in, in crochet, I was not proficient enough to deal with that. <laughs> So I had many fewer stitches on the back because my boobs are on my front and they take up fabric. Um, but I actually didn't know how to, to get to the shoulders to be the correct width and then also to prepare, like to plan for a sleeve because then I was going to have an asymmetrical sleeve because like, anyway, I decided that I had messed up. <laughs> I ripped out the entire, I had had the back all the way up to the, the seam. Um, and I had started at the front. So I realized like, okay, no, I got to take this apart because originally what I was doing was, and I say, um, originally when I cast off, when I started working the fronts and the backs, I actually kept working all of them because I didn't want the two fronts to be different because of the hand spun, like in a, commercial yarn that would not have been an issue but because of the hand spun I was afraid that if I worked this front separately from this front it they would look really different because of the hand spun so originally I was just doing the hands the backs and the 
fronts at the same time, which is super easy in crochet. Um, but I got, I guess I wasn't done with the back because I had wasn't done with the fronts either. So I must have gotten like two thirds of the way done with the, the yoke. And then I was like, oh, this is not right. So I ripped out the back. I saved the yarn. Um, I knew that I would need more yarn because I needed to widen that back panel. And really I left the fronts just as is. I just took away from the underarm cast off. I had fewer, I just had fewer stitches cast off or set aside for the, the sleeve. Um, so I widened that back out. I saved the yarn because I thought, I don't know if I'm actually gonna have enough yarn at this point. So I saved it, but when I went back to work the back, I ended up finishing the fronts and then I went back into the back and I just started a new sequence of hand spun and it's fine. I mean, it doesn't look weird. So I got all that done. Um, I just see all of the seaming I did on the whole sweater was just with slip stitch seaming. Um, it's not the most graceful way to crochet to seam a crocheted garment, but I mean, it's granny stripes. So like elegance is not imperative. <laughs> and also I don't dislike the way they look. I mean, so that's the shoulder seam, um, right there. Um, and that's one of the nice things too about it being a lighter weight yarn, like a fingering to a sport, is that the seaming is is not as problematic if you do it in a in the slip stitch style. So yeah, so I got that done. Then I did the sleeves, and to be honest with you, the sleeves I totally want just winged the whole thing. Um, I that's one of the other really nice things about crochet and garments is like I cast on some stuff for my my sleeve. And I realized like, oh, I didn't really, I didn't cast on, cast on enough stitches. So in the tutorial I did about the knitting cast on, I talk about how if you want to add more stitches or take away stitches, it's easy enough to do that. And so I just added some more stitches to my cast on and went from there. I did work both my sleeves at the same time because I knew I was not working from a pattern that I did not want to try to worry about writing everything down to make sure that they were symmetrical. So. I worked them at the same time for that reason. Then also again, so that there wouldn't be like one sleeve completely different from the other. I was a little concerned that the sleeves would look so different from the body, but it all kind of just washes together, I think. Um, I th so I'm pleased with how that worked out. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, so sleeves. So yeah, I just kind of kept trying trying them on. They were They worked flat because crochet does have a right and a wrong side. Like, um, so because the sweater was worked back and forth, I needed to work the sleeves back and forth. Um, so that's what I did. So they needed to be, so they, I couldn't exactly try it on. I just had to like kind of hold the seam together and be like, oh, does that fit? How's that feeling? Um, and so I just kind of based my increase rate on what I felt like was fitting at the time. Um, so yeah, I just made my sleeve until I got to the, and I just kept holding it up to myself and be like, mm, okay, okay. Again, can't do that when knitting. So much nicer with the crochet in that way. Um, but I was able to just kind of hold it up and then be like, okay, I'm about to where my arm would, you know, where my sweater would meet. Um, now it's time to start working some sort of shaping to mirror the, um, to the cardigan. How did I know when to stop increasing from my sleeve cap so that it would actually fit into the um, the sweater. Literally, I just held it up to the sweater. I was just like, I measured it first because I figured that would be easier. I measured the sleeve opening. It was like, and with a cloth measuring tape, literally held it around, not like the depth of the sleeve, but actually tracing the sleeve hole. I measured what that would be. And then I knew that I'd have, um, so you work the sleeve like this, right? And then you have it come in a little bit and then you go up again for the sleeve cap. Again, it's not a true sleeve cap because it's modified drop. So it's more like a sleeve parallel. What's the opposite of a parallelogram? Rhombus, rhomboid, whatever. <sighs> Just make it work. That's exactly what you do. Just 
just make it work. It's going to be fine. Uh, but I measured it roughly to see like, okay, I need it to be about yay big. So once I got in the neighborhood of yay big, I was like, oh, okay. So then I started to just be like, okay, so now I need to cast off a few to match the few that I cast off for the sleeve on the body. So I cast off that many. In this case, it was like three treble crochet units on each side. And then I had decreased a treble crochet. Like I had just like, decreased is not the right word because I just like stepped it over. Um, like again, when I was starting the sleeve decreases for the body, the sleeve scythe, um, I just kind of started the next chunk over a couple of times. So I did the same thing with the sleeve. A couple of rows, I just started a chunk over. And so then I just really just held the sleeve up to the, the sleeve up to the actual sweater body and was like okay that matches and then I put the sweater on and held the sleeve up to it and was like that seems legitimate and then I was ready to just sew the two things together <laughs> it was that hard it was a lot of just like oh, that's the nice thing about I would never tell you to do that with knitting never ever <laughs> But with crochet, you can totally get away with it. Again, like it's not a super complicated arm. It's not like I did it again, a not set in sleeve or anything. It's a clunkier arm sleeve. It doesn't meet my perfect shoulder line, but it's a granny stripe cardigan. So I'm really okay with that. So yeah, that's exactly what I did. Um, let me just make sure that that's... Okay, so flat sleeves, I talked about that. Um... Mm-hmm, rate of increase, mm-hmm. Just matched it up, mm-hmm. Seaming, I talked about how I just used a slip stitch seam. You can Google that or YouTube video, search it, whatever. Um, and then, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the buttonhole band. Another thing that's super duper easy in knitting, I mean crocheting. Um, again, because crochet is not flexible or not as flexible as knitting, um, I just measured my gauge for the body. I did go down a hook size for the band. So I did a little sample of the band, like that, of what that was going to be. And so really to figure out like my pickup rate, I just put the number of column stitches per inch I had over the number of row stitches per inch. And like, that's my pickup rate. Or you could just pick up a couple inches and work it a little bit and see how it looks. Much easier to do than knitting. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, my pickup rate was definitely different than it was in knitting. Because again, crochet stitches are so much taller than they are wide. Especially when they're triple crochets like this was. Um, but that's exactly what I did. So you can see here, and then I did my buttonhole band again. I went down a needle size, and it is American single crochets versus the body, which is treble crochets. Um, just for density. Um, I didn't want it to be a real holy loosey goosey border because I knew I was going to have buttons in it. And then buttonholes, super easy in crochet. You just skip some. <laughs> and there you go. Ready to go. Um, but you can Google um, how to do a buttonhole in a crochet band. But what did I even do? It, it felt easy. But now I'm looking at it. I'm like, I don't even remember what I did. Oh, yeah. You literally, that's what you do. Foolish me. Um, you just like get to where your buttonhole is and then chain X number of stitches and then go back and start doing your single crochets. And then on the next row, you just do your single crochets into those chains and there's your buttonhole. Um, and they look very tidy and nice, right? And you can see my pickup looks very, I think it looks nice. This is what it looks like on the wrong side. I think it looks okay. I'm 
just saying. Um, buttons, I really wasn't sure about buttons on this one. Um, of course, you can't get out. Oh, I just found a giant end that apparently I did not weave in. Um, buttons. It's harder to get out and about right now in terms of like trying to find buttons and things like that. So I decided what I was going to do is just do some fabric covered buttons. And for the longest time, I was really intimidated by doing fabric covered buttons. I think I must have tried to do them when I was like seven or eight or something. Because in my head, it was like this impossible thing to do. Maybe it's like modern technology, but literally it's just like two pieces of thing that you put next to each other so it doesn't feel like modern technology but who knows maybe when I was trying to do them before I did it with like heavier weight fabric or something neither here nor there if you ever feel like you want to do fabric cover buttons do them because they're super easy and in fact you might decide that you want to have a business selling fabric cover buttons because they are very fun to make then your daughter will also decide that she needs to have a business making fabric cover buttons. And um, then you like plan out how that would look for you, like with two people in the same house having competing fabric covering businesses. And you know, you decide maybe that that's not the path you want to go down. And so you maybe both take a step back, but for a moment there was tension. But I'm just saying, it's really fun to make fabric covered buttons and it's super cheap if you have fabric in your life, which I might. Um, I used a Charlie Harper fabric because it was dear to my heart and also had a lot of variation in color, which I wanted. I didn't want my, because the sweater itself had so much variation color, um, I didn't like the look of the buttons being too consistent. So I wanted them to be all over the place. And also it meant that I got to have like tiny birds on my buttons. Okay, the best is I've been holding this, trying to get it to focus for you, and then I realized I don't have glasses on, and that's why it's not focusing, because my eyes aren't focusing. It is actually focusing. I just can't see that it's focusing. <laughs> but anyway, are those not the cutest? So I highly recommend fabric covered buttons for cuteness. Also, I was kind of nervous about the shank buttons because that's what these are. They're, they have like a little metal shank underneath of there. Um, but they seem to sit very nicely in the crocheted um, fabric. And I didn't feel like they needed a backing button. Um, to be honest with you, I'm probably not gonna button this sweater. Um, if I find that they're pulling, you know, I could always put a backing button on there just to give them so that so much stress is not placed on just this little bit where it's stitched into. But at this point, I don't foresee myself really buttoning it that much. So I don't think that'll be a problem. Um, so yeah. Oh, and yeah, that's just, that's what I did. I just crocheted around there. Um, I worked the button band. I worked the solid button band. I worked the button hole band. And then I worked the collar. Um, and I was kind of nervous when I had tried it on before I crocheted my collar on. It kind of felt like maybe it was a little too boat necky. Um, but the crochet collar kind of brought everything together. I did do decreases, like at my seams. Again, just to try to help bring it in a little bit so that it wouldn't look so loosey-goosey. Um, and by decreases, I just mean that like I skipped Instead of crocheting into every single crochet, I just skip one um, at this line, and it I think it worked out really well. So yeah, that's my sweater. I dig it. I think it's gonna be fun for the winter times. And I say that it's my house sweater, and people were like, oh, you can wear that outside the house. I'm like, I'm sorry. Yes, I totally can wear it outside the house, but I forgot, I, I call everything a house thing because like, I just mostly am in my house. <laughs> and to me, it's like a compliment, like my house dresses. I'm like, cause they're cozy and they're fun. I mean, cozy, that's their summer wear, but still they make me feel cozy. They like they feel comfortable and like just nice. And so when I say that it's a house sweater, 
I think that's mostly what I mean is that like it can be homemade it doesn't have to be handmade and I will totally wear homemade things outside of the house too, but they have an affinity to the house because they're homemade. I don't know, it's just in my head. But I think that's all of the things, right? I mean, that's a lot of things that we talked about. Um, you know, is maybe I should talk about things I would do the same, things I would do different. I think if I were to make another one. Oh, the ends were terrible. The ends were bad. <laughs> I actually saved the ends that I wove in and put them in a Ziploc baggie because there were so many of them that I was just like, I needed to hold on to it for a little bit just to be like, that's a lot. <laughs> so, the, and I totally did work in the ends as I went. Um, on the, but you can only do that like on, well, whatever. You can't work them all in because sometimes there's too much of a contrast between like the last row and like on the hand spun, like if there's a big contrast, like when you try to weave both of them in at the same time, like work both of them in, it is a little bit like weird looking. And also sometimes I crochet or my hand spun yarn was just fatter and it was like, that's too bulky. Um, but yeah, I mean, you've got two ends for every row and that's pretty ridiculous. It's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, that's not something I would do differently, but it was one thing. It was probably the only thing about the project besides the cast on which I changed ultimately so that's no longer would prevent me from making another one but the ends no the ends wouldn't prevent me from making another one it would just be like oh that's gonna happen but I don't have a particular hate for weaving in ends like I know some people do um I'm also not particularly fussy about it like you can see that my ends are not perfect and again a lot of them I just worked in as I went just went back and trimmed them um and none of my yarn was super washed so that like added an extra sense of like, okay, ultimately this will just kind of felt together and be fine. Um, so that made me feel not as particular about it. Um, what would I do different? If I were to do this project again, I think I would actually make it a top down raglan. Um, yeah, I think that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. That's only the only thing I would do different. <laughs> the only thing I would do different is make the thing completely different. But you know what I mean. Since I was not following the pattern, the pattern didn't do me any favors. So I think if I were gonna do it again, I would do top-down raglan because again, like it's super easy to try on the, the crochet as you go. And the only thing that was at all stressful about this project was that whole sleeve cap thing where I was like, ah, and then I had to rip out some, some, knit, some crocheting because of it. So, if I were to do it in the future, I would probably do it top down raglan. And also I like to increase with crochet versus decrease. It's a little bit less stressful. Um, but yeah, I think I would totally do another one. Um, I would just do it top down raglan. And you know, I think it's super fun to think of it being like a themed project again, like the Beatrix Potter one, whatever you may choose. I think it's a fun way to pick the colors or again, to pick a fabric that you really love and pick the color inspiration from that. I like that idea, especially if it's a sweater, a, a garment, like a fabric that you could do a garment from because then you would have like a whole thing. But don't make it too matchy matchy, but you totally could because nobody else would know that it was that matchy matchy because I would have no idea that you made both of those things and that's awesome. So yeah, I think if I were doing it again, that's what I would do differently. But other than that, it was really enjoyable. I mean, it took a long time. That's a lot of crochet. And again, it's 34 ounces of fingering and or sport weight yarn. That's a lot. Yours won't weigh that much unless you're my size. Um, but yeah, I would totally make another one. It was fun. And I do really like the finished project, the product. Um, all right, well, that's my granny stripe card again. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the notes below and I will try to get back to you. Bye.